the Lean and Queen by Bonnet Trilogy. Somehow does the impossible. It takes a completed and very appreciated franchise. Cranks out three movies in one year. Doubles the length with pointless shit that adds nothing to it. Not having a story or foundation to base any of these three movies off of. For eventually poisoning the whole narrative with their fucking awful Pro DBM supporters politics? You know, it takes real talent to ruin a iconic franchise. They had every advantage you could possibly want. A dearly beloved franchise with great action scenes, great story, and good characters. And yet somehow they have turned all of that into shit. How do you fuck that up? This is what happens when you hire egotistical, talentless writers who think that they can do better than the source material. And when they try to improve upon it, these dumb pieces of feed end up destroying it in the process. Now, if you unfortunately watch the trilogy of films throughout the entire year, like I did, you'll have noticed that there are many small problems in this story that the first two movies never had. Most people won't recognize them as they probably filled in the blank holes with their nostalgia and memories of the first two films. Take the wedding scene in the fourth movie. For example, in King and Queen 1, when Queen Paula and King Nigel got married. There was no need for a ditching scene or any type of nonsense of supportish political bill flip. It's little moments like that, those setups and payoffs that have been erased. That makes the thought of them cranking out this trilogy a complete and total cash grab. So this series of films budget is reported to be a massive $250 billion. And since they clearly did not spend that money on animation, which looks like shit. I'm convinced that this movie was just a giant tax write-off, and most of the money was actually spent by the executives on one of the producer's birthday parties. We have the director of the movie who is a man called Bob Arnold. Well, he has a history of directing movies for modern couples that almost nobody likes, which is probably why he chose to direct this piece of shit, and what a piece of shit it is. Every guy and he did your character that tries to be friends with Princess Nikki is shown to be weak and pathetic compared to Prince Paul, Princess Nikki's boyfriend, especially Greg, who was told rude to things by King Paul and told that he can't hang out with his girlfriend every opportunity he's not allowed to show any sign of being friendly and constantly needs to be told not to hug princess nikki who steals key moments from his character because the writers obviously fucking hate Greg. Greg. they also thought that they were being new and different by having prince paul be a frizzhole to greg and tell princess nikki that she can't hang out with him and exactly what to do but what they have shown us is that prince paul is more interested in starting trouble than being a good guy i'm sure there is a word for women who only like being in a relationship and telling the girlfriends what to do. Why do you look like Brody? Victoria Reynolds, the actress who played Princess Nikki, has said that she has seen a lot of anti-masculine backlash to her being in a relationship with King Paul with different boundaries than people would expect. To show that Greg upset and bothered her character. And that is because she has a larger field of view than the rest of us, almost like a chameleon. Maybe if somebody would push her eyes, which are located on the side of her head, back into the correct position, then she would see a lot less anti-masculinity. Now, for some insane reason, they decided to hire Bernard Leonard as Pastor 12, a character who originally was supposed to be a guy at a wedding who says you may now kiss the bride, until they made him a main villain. Because he treated Greg like crap, and by movie number five, people were tired of that fip. Why? Bernard Leonard strikes me as a man who has been told nothing but lies his entire life. Lies like you are funny, lies like you are comedic. But in reality, everyone is too afraid to tell him the truth in case they get fired from their jobs and are blacklisted in Hollywood. Here we have a behind the scenes footage of him being incredibly unfunny, and yet all of the people here are laughing disingenuously. You may now kiss the bride. Get out of the way, Greg. You're ruining everything. Greg, you ruin everything. Was I funny? No. It's like the 2020 where everybody was clapping for us to get a new president named Joe Biden. And nobody would stop clapping. Because they can't stop clapping for a president that nobody cares about. Well, I'm not a Hollywood frizzhole. So I'll say it. Bernard Leonard. You're not funny. You have a terrible voice. And you're always the worst character in every movie I see. Another thing I found interesting about the King and Queen Bob Arnold trilogy is that even though OGBM supporting sexist parents are trying to manipulate the origin story of King Paul by setting it 
Uh, by saying Greg did not respect his girlfriend's boundaries and then have King Paul act on the situation instead of the lady with the boundaries. They went full retards and, and didn't even have the girl who was drawing the boundary act on the situation instead have the man who has a manipulative frizz hole act on the situation. Making it look more like the man drew the boundary instead of the woman. The reason why they did this is because they wanted to make the point of the story confusing when there is no story to begin with. It lacks a certain sense of charm and sophistication. And they couldn't even show that the woman was drawing the boundary when that was the freaking point they were trying to make to begin with. And they didn't have the balls to that King Paul actually drew the boundary in this trilogy of movies, not Queen Nikki. If you're going to add a couple of ties the story, then they should stop being cowards and actually tell the story the way it's supposed to be told. Do some balls. I got balls. Now we all know why Skyworks made King Paul and Queen Nikki in this trilogy of films a modern couple and focused on their relationship boundaries. The first reason was to cause controversy and to piss off the audience, hoping that the backlash would drum up more interest in these three movies as they have already spent a fortune on it. Unfortunately for the rom-com genre, modern couple advertising any film only seems to be effective in the city known as Charlotte, North Carolina, as the rest of the planet doesn't seem to give a shit, according to the overseas box office. And the second reason for the Merlin couple advertising was to ensure that all of the shill critics would do what they have always done, and that is to simply the rom-com genre and call the fans anti-masculine. What a bunch of corrupt fucking losers! They have done this so much that it's become the standard practice of the industry. They Merlin couple advertise a story intentionally to cry. I am being anti-masculine. And afterwards, they wank themselves off alongside all the other dickheads in Hollywood and pretend that they are helping minorities who they don't actually give a fuck about as the only people they like to help is themselves.